Do you want a dynamic and automated solution to report cards in Excel, saving each of these at the push of a button to individual PDFs? Well, today we'll learn how. First of all, you're going to want to open up an Excel file and save it specifically as a macro enabled workbook. This will be in one of the drop downs under the save as. I'm just going to call it Excel Report Generator, select this specific option here, and then hit save. I'll find it in this location, which is the folder I'll be using for this video, deleting anything else in there. You'll also want to right click, go to properties, and in the bottom right, you may find unblock. If you do, make sure to tick that, select apply and OK. This means there'll be no restrictions on running the VBA. VBA is a programming language used in Office applications. It stands for Visual Basic for Applications. Now to get to use that, you need to enable it in File Options. Go all the way down to Customize Ribbon. And then on the right side pane there, you'll see Developer. Hitting OK and ticking it will allow you to gain this additional Developer tab which means you can run VBA. Now, before we get way too ahead of ourselves, let's actually create the report that we want to automate. So I did that here. I went through and had a little play about, making sure I selected a specific area, changed the cell colors and so forth. Let's skip all of that. I also made some data. This was student data with student ID, name, age, class, subject and grade. You can imagine this being any sort of data for employees or otherwise. But once it was generated, it was time to go back to this report. This is what I ended up with. It would say the student ID, their details, their grades, and then visualize it. I want to make one of these for each and every one of my students, but it would be a lot easier if I could filter through them. So select a cell, click data, Head all the way over to data validation, and then you're going to want to select list from this first drop down. It's going to ask what list you're looking at. So if you press this button next to source, you can say you're looking specifically at column A or whichever column you want to filter by. And through doing this, I now have a drop down. You can see it's also included the blanks there. So you could make sure that it filters those out. But effectively, I now have an initial filter for students. Now, to fill in each of these fields, it's just a VLOOKUP with equals VLOOKUP, selecting that cell, comma. Then you want to select the table. Starting at column A, which is the first column, this is where it's looking up to. I want to go all the way across to column F. Now, in this instance, I'm specifically looking at the second column along, which is the name. If I copy it down, you'll see it'll look at a different range and won't be working anymore. So I need to lock the cells via clicking F4 or Fn and F4. Now, once I hit run, I can now drag down each of these cells and it will maintain the same formula. The problem is Toby is not the answer to each of these questions. So what I want to do here is after I've reformatted it accurately, is I want to go in and change the number of the column it's looking at, one through two, three, four, and so forth. You'll now see I'll find the corresponding value for each of the student IDs. Brilliant. Average grade is a little bit more complex because it's an average. It's a formula, not just looking up a single value with a VLOOKUP. To do this, it's actually quite straightforward. You're going to want to hit equal and then do average if. If I hit tab here, it will autocomplete. Now, what you want to do from here is not select cell D5. You actually want to go straight to the data source, selecting column A. And I'm going to say comma, column A is equal to cell D5. So then I click D5. Next, I'll hit another column, another comma, go back to the data sheet and say I'm specifically looking at column F. Now, what has that done? It's looked at cell D5, which is the student ID in our list. It's looked that up in column A of the data sheet and found the corresponding average of the grade. Here, if I filter by Toby, we can see in the bottom right that yes, it has worked correctly. 
Fantastic. Now, I do need to clear up the formatting there a little bit, but we want to go and make a very similar step here, but per department. Mathematics, science, and so forth. This is where it gets a little bit more complex. So to achieve this, I'm going to want to use equals filter. Now, what I'm filtering for is the specific grades for the specific student for each course. So, so let's select column E and F as I'm just looking at the grades and the course. Then we'll do comma column A. This is the student, the one we're looking it up for. A is equal to column D5, which we've used a few times here. Now this will about wrap it up. We want to do a comma though and say what we're going to do if it doesn't find anything. So I'll put in some quotation marks, no subjects, but you could change that to whatever you'd like. Now I am going to ensure again, I'm locking these cells so they're not looking at any relative position and just looking at exactly where I want them to look. To do that again, F4 is your key. You may need to press or hold control FN or otherwise. Just make sure you look that up. Now, in doing this, it means I can copy and paste it anywhere in the report, which I'll do here. I'll do control C and then control V. You can now see not only has it automatically filled in, but it has also updated our chart, which is looking at that specific cell range to build the bar graph. Now, after fixing the formatting here just a little bit, I'll want to add a special touch and by clicking these cells and then going to the fill, I can make them a specific color, which matches my theme. Now, if we filter through these, you'll see how it does dynamically update, which is brilliant. A little aside here is the top right, the date. I put the formula equals today, close and open brackets. That's how it will always update to the latest date. Now, this is good, but it's not automatically running through each of these. To do that, I'm going to have to create how I want it to look. And through going to the print page, I can format that. Now, this is the most fiddly bit. See, I made it all fit on one page. I changed the margins to narrow. I also had to play with the page size. As you can see here, I put it as letter, but put whatever fits best. I also changed the orientation to landscape. In the bottom right here, you can have a play with the margin sizes. You can also do that in the actual Excel sheet itself, just to click in the bottom right and then specifically say where you want the print zone to be. Now, this is nothing special. You don't even have to do any of this. But again, if I press page setup, go all the way down, I can align it in the middle, both horizontally and vertically, and it just gives a cleaner feel. Now that we're done with that, let's get to the actual VBA. Going to developer, hitting Visual Basic, we're then able to create a new sheet or by right clicking, going Insert Module. This is where we will type the code. Now I've provided this for you in the description. So you don't have to sit here and copy it out with me. I've done that before watching other tutorials and it's, it's no fun. But just hitting run up there with the little green arrow, you'll see it's starting to do something. It's actually generating each of your reports to the specific save location in this VBA. I've specifically told it I want it to save to a folder location on my laptop or PC. Make sure you've done the same as well. Just go through it line by line and you'll see where I've left comments saying what you'll need to change. Where I've said specific cell references like D5, for example, you can change those also. Now, as it's running along, it will pop up eventually and say complete. We're able to go to the folder location, just hit refresh, and there they all are, each and every one of the reports. Now that's great, but what if we could go to insert in the developer tab and then draw our own button? This is a lot more of an engaging and interactive way to use a macro or a VBA. We can assign it to the button, change the title, and you're done. You're now able to hit run just by clicking it. If you wanna move it about or edit it in any way, make sure to hold control and then click. Otherwise, if you just click it, it will run. One problem I had in testing this is I accidentally ran it loads of times. So to stop it, just press the escape button and it should stop the VBA script. 
Now, thank you very much and all the very best.